So I thought I'd do a tutorial today primarily on how I handle using melodic one shots and not, not percussive, not drum shots, but like synth sounds and pianos and guitars and all that stuff. And this came about because I use machine a lot in my productions. I'm going to open up machine here. I'm going to explain a little problem I have with machine. I have a, a synth shot loaded in here into machine. And when I play it on my keyboard, I want you to, to notice the, the length of the sample. Notice that, that as I go lower, the sample gets louder. And as I go higher, the sample gets really short. Now that bothers me. If I'm working on a track and I have a bass line or I'm running a synth line and, and the sample length is not the exact length that I need it for, then I'm going to come into some serious complications on how I'm going to try to work around it. So I'm going to go into contact here. This is why I use contact for mostly everything. And I find myself opening up contact within machine uh, when I'm using machine to write songs. So I'm going to open up contact. And here I got a uh, an instrument I'm making right now. And I'll open it up. And I got a bunch of samples loaded in here from the sample pack. I believe they're all bass samples. Yep, all different bass samples. So when I get these sample packs and I get these one shots, what I end up doing is throwing them into contact and creating an instrument with them. But instead of creating one instrument per sample, what I do is I take all the samples and dump them all into one instrument and play them by choosing which one I want at the time. It'd be difficult to explain, but I'll show you exactly what's happening here. So I'm going to select all the samples and I'm going to go to the root note here. Now in this sample pack, all the roots were A. So I'm going to set the root to A2. So now all the roots are set up for A2. And then I'm going to go to the key range here and set the key range for as low as possible, which would be C minus two. And set it for the highest, which would be about G, G8 or something. There we go. Once this is done, I'm going to right click all the samples and go move into each zone into its own group empty. I'm going to click this and you're going to see all these samples here populate in their own group. Now what I want you to be aware of right here is this Time Machine Pro. As soon as I click a different sample, it goes to Sampler, which is exactly the same as what you find in Machine. I don't want this. So what I end up doing is, is if I open up the group editor here, you're going to see how it says edit all groups. It's already enabled. So regardless of which group I pick, it'll still say sampler until I go here and change this to Time Machine Pro. Now, once this is done, all of them will now say Time Machine Pro. But if I press a key on my keyboard, what's gonna happen is all the samples are gonna play at once and I don't want that. So if I disable this and I go to group solo and I press a key, now you notice that I can play all the ranges of that sample. And if I go to a different sample, so now I can play them all at the proper length. You'll probably only get about an octave in either direction uh, until you start to get a little bit of artifacts in, uh, in the sample, which is fine. I mean, you might come across some gems and, uh, and get something interesting with your sound here. Now, a lot of people complain about one shots that, well, they don't sound like, like a synthesizer would, which makes sense and doesn't make sense because most likely they came from a synthesizer in the first place. So one of the big problems is, is that they don't have a glide function or some kind of a port portamento or something. If you go into the script built into contact here and you pick an empty script and go to presets, factory, and performance, you're going to find Unisono and Portamento. If you click this, you're going to get all these fancy knobs. You go to Portamento, jack it all the way up, go to mono mode, all the way to legato, right? If you play a note on the keyboard and then press another note, there's your Portamento. Just adjust your time for what you want. If I change my group now,
there's your port amenum. So we're getting someplace here. Now, you can use the built-in effects in contact uh, for reverbs and delays and all that stuff. I personally don't. I do everything via my DAW through Cubase. So when I'm using one shots in Cubase, I'll go to my inserts page and notice I have a bunch of plugins already in there. I have a reverb, delay, uh, an NLS channel, which is basically a uh, channel strip from a old school mixing board, just add some dirt and the micro shift, which is used to give some stereo width. Uh, so if I disable this, let's turn the volume up a bit. This is the sound of the actual sample with nothing on it. And with all the inserts, now it sounds a little bit more that you would find, more like you'd find in your synthesizer. And you may not want to have stereo width on a bass, so I'd turn that off. But I think it sounds pretty good. So this is how I handle one shots in contact. Now, there's no workaround in machine to do this, to get your samples the same length. They haven't incorporated this algorithm found in contact five. So I generally use contact five, you know, I'll, I'll pull it up within machine. And then the problem with that is that you might have, it might be a little CPU intensive. And uh, if you're on a laptop, it might cause your CPU to overload. But uh, I find it a lot more useful and a lot, a, a lot better for, for, for digging through samples. Just load up in machine with 50 samples, find one you like, drop it in. And then you may find something, uh, something very interesting you normally wouldn't have done. Now, if you go back to contact here, I want to, close this back and I have this opening screen here. Now notice how I have a wallpaper here. Now you can customize this in contact uh, instead of having that blank gray screen like you're used to. If you go to script editor and within the script editor, you go down to where all the code is. Now I have a bunch of code here because I made a, a, a fancy script to have uh, it, it take care of all your envelope filters and everything like that. Uh, all I have to do is is just get rid of all of this and that. And if you copy this, hit apply, just these three lines of codes and the opening and closing statement, what will happen is you'll get this blank screen at this size and you can drop a picture in through here where it says instrument wallpaper, just click it, find a picture, close it. And then when you close your screen and go back to the original front, you have a picture here. So now you can have customized wallpapers for contact, which is nice because it adds some little inspiration for whatever you're building, right? So I hope this helps. And this is how I use one shots in my productions. And hopefully this helps you with your productions. Cheers.